Hi. Goodness, what a pleasure. Thank you so much for, for <laughs> doing this. Goodness, uh, shall we get started? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. If you could voice any character from any genre, cartoon, video game, otherwise, who would it be? Batman. <laughs> <laughs> okay, besides, besides yeah, Batman. I'm not just saying that. I'm not just saying that. People ask me all the time what other superhero I would want to play. And I always say, well, what other superhero is there when you start with Batman? He's so complicated. He's so dark. He's got so many colors. Um, he's, he's such a rich well of, of emotion that he's a great character to play. I love playing Batman. I've been spoiled. <laughs> you know, it was the first animated voice I auditioned for. Um, I went in cold, and I just... I winged it. I just improvised in the booth, and I got it. I mean, it's it's one of those just sort of kismet kind of moments. You wonder how did you get so lucky? Um, so really, honestly, I'm not saying I'm not just saying that, but he, <laughs> he is the character I would want to do. And it, I do love doing Joker though too. Joker's a lot of fun to do, but no one can do it as well as Mark. So as long as Mark's around, I'll let him do Joker. Yes. <laughs> did you did you like Batman well, as a child? Were you an, a a childhood Batman fan? Well, it's funny when I went in to do the audition in '91. I walked in to meet Bruce Tim and Paul Dini and Andrea Romano, and I wasn't aware that Batman had never been a cartoon. I assumed it had been one at some point, and they said, "What is your familiarity with Batman?" I said, "Well, I know the." the, you know, Batman series from TV with Adam West. And they said, no, 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 that's not the direction we're going. That's not it at all. That was, that was campy and, and fun. This is dark, broody, mm -hmm. and film noir. And they, they had to kind of bring me up to speed um, just to the story of uh, The Dark Knight Returns and the, the, the real essence of Batman. I did not realize a lot about it. Uh, I didn't grow up on uh, comic books. Um, so for me, it was really improvising in the sound room uh, and just putting my acting chops into it. And they were describing to me his parents are killed as a child. He's been avenging their deaths. He's, he's living a, 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 you know, this double identity and um, he's tortured and misunderstood. And I said, well, you're telling the Hallett story. Is this, is, were you intending to do that? And they said, well, gee, no one's ever said that before. But my background now, I went to Juilliard. I worked with John Houseman. I did a lot of Broadway. and I've done a lot of Shakespeare. So I was just equating it to some of the great classic roles. He's a, he's a very Hamlet-like guy. He's also sort of an Orestes kind of character. Um, he's one of those arcane, uh, uh, um, um, iconic, um, mythological characters. Uh, I use the metaphor all the time when I'm doing Comic Cons to talk about the show about how comic books are our culture's mythology. It's 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 our Achilles. There, you know, we have Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. They have Achilles, Orestes, and and Electra. Absolutely. Um, it's how we teach morality to young people. It's the same thing. It's the same stuff. It's it's um, it's just the way our culture does it. Uh, so I approach the character as an actor, and as you would a great, tragic um, hero, and very seriously, and and it it, it sold, and they, they they bought it on the spot, which was great. Certainly great for for all of us um, as well. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, so when when did you read your first comic then? I. Um, We, um, I, had a, I had kind of an odd childhood because my uh, uh, my parents were, um, were my brother's a very uh, dark uh, alcoholic and uh, um, uh, incredibly cheap, uh, so there was not a lot of uh, frivolity around mm -hmm. that house, and um, I did not have a lot of comic books. Um, it was not, it was just not something that we were allowed to indulge in. I went to Catholic schools, and it was a very strict, a 
very strict childhood with with um, a lot of alcohol in the family. So it was not a um, what shall I say? It was not a um, a rosy. I'm <laughs> sorry to, to hear that. Uh, So, um, so then maybe as an adult, was it, you know, that you, that you came across it? Cause you, you did say that when you, um, auditioned for Batman, that you weren't really familiar with the comic. So when did, when did you familiarize uh, yourself? They, they, what's really, what's amazing and, and been lucky for me is that Mark Hamill is a comic book genius. He's a, he's like a maven on all this stuff. He's the, the go-to guy. And he just brings me up to speed on everything. Oh, I see. Um, so he's been great for all that for me. <laughs> we, we have a wonderful relationship. There's a real trust there. Uh, we work very well together. Um, I got to know him and his, his family. and um, there, There's great trust in the recording studio between the two of us. That's wonderful. Um... What do you like to do in your spare time when you're not working or touring? Uh, I paint. I, I work in oil paint, and I also uh, rebuild uh, old houses. It's what I've done for a long time. Um, I, I love I love doing carpentry. Acting is such a an abstract business. You don't have much to show for it, mm -hmm. um, and I love seeing some, the results of something. So I love uh, working with wood, and I love also um, painting. So those are those are my hobbies. That's that's wonderful. I didn't know that you painted. I, I'm gonna have to check that out. I I have my own like tiny little art <laughs> thing that I do. So I'll have to post some of my paintings online or something. You should. But I don't do that because I'm a hobby painter, and I know people would be very critical. So. No, I think I think if anything, you get a pass. <laughs> it could be you could. <laughs> of Batman that you voiced, which one is your favorite? of um, Batman falling in love, who is your favorite of his romantic interests? enjoy being, you know, the Batman guy, or is that sometimes kind of frustrating? Oh, God, no, he's a wonderful character to play. 
is because he is so complicated and there are so many different levels to him. It's not like being Superman, you know, it's not it's not just the square jawed boring hero. Um, this is a guy who's tortured, um, and who who's living out his own um, screwed up psychology every day. Mm. Um, so he's you know, he's really got his his heart on his sleeve in a lot of ways, even though he's someone who doesn't show a lot of emotion, uh, he suppresses enormous amounts of emotion. Um, so I love playing the character. He's a very complicated character. Um, what I love doing also is any time I get to show a little bit of irony or humor, uh, that's a lot of fun <laughs> to play because it resonates so much with the audience. They love it. Sure, um, it's it's there a spark. There was an episode of uh, there was an episode where I, I sang "Am I Blue" um, <laughs> to uh, pay off a debt to um, uh, Cersei. I guess it was the villainess. And um, the people went nuts for it because it seemed so incongruous <laughs> for Batman to be seen in a nightclub. But I love doing things that are incongruous like that. It's fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who is your favorite live action Batman? That's 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 really hard because they've all been wonderful. I like Michael Keaton. Uh, I think Ben Affleck's done a really good job. Um, I like, the, I, to be honest, I like the fact that Warner Brothers didn't pick one person and give them the franchise. Mm -hmm. I think it was really smart to choose a lot of different people to see how different people played the role. Um, because there are lots of different approaches to the role. I mean, I thought Mark Hamill was, was the Joker. He nailed it. And he did. And he is the Joker. But then Heath Ledger comes along and nails it in a different way. You know, mm -hmm. he just... He, he was brilliant in a whole different way, and I thought, wow, I, I, I didn't think anyone could be as good as Mark, and Keith Ledger is just as good as Mark. Um, not better, but just as good. So it's, it's interesting to see how different actors, what different actors bring to a role. Um, so I've liked a number of them. I think Ben Affleck is, is doing a great job, um, and I know a lot of people were very suspicious of what he would do. Sure. Uh, or, or, do, or dubious about his casting, but I, I, I think he's, he's terrific. So now, I've, I've heard you criticize, um, all, understandably and, and albeit very kindly, the Christian Bale Batman voice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> um, that's the problem with the internet. If you say one thing, it's the one thing that people get printed out there and, you know, no, I mean, wants you forever. It's like I said, it was it was very kind and it was you know, and it was a valid criticism. Um, but lately there's a portion of DC's fan base that's become uh, fanatical. Um, they respond aggressively to any and all criticism of, of DC. And um, again, you're probably exempt. I think you get to, <laughs> to say whatever. but um, what do you think of these so-called DC fanboys um, who, who actually think, by the way, that there's a conspiracy, among critics to favor Marvel and over-criticize DC. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> well, there's always a little bit of paranoia in the internet, I guess. You have to respect that people have opinions about things. I mm -hmm. mean, when I said that about Christian Bale, I also said that he was the best at the Bruce Wayne character, mm -hmm. but that never gets quoted. Um, he was brilliant as Bruce Wayne. He's perfect for Bruce Wayne. Um, I just thought the voice he used as Batman was a little odd, but um, um, but his Bruce Wayne was fantastic. He's, he's perfect casting for the role. Um, I don't know, people. You know, the, the internet is a very dangerous place because there are all these camps that that, that, that are formed. So people tr people become tribes on the internet. You're either with us or you're against us, and if you're against us, then you're the villains and you're the enemy. You gotta accept the fact that, you know, everyone has lots of opinions, and, and all opinions are valid. I mean, it, you know, that's a democracy, right? right? Everyone's allowed to have an opinion. It, it doesn't make you the enemy or evil. People have gotta to learn to be more tolerant, or remember that we used to be more tolerant before we became so balkanized uh, on the internet. And Does that make sense? Absolutely, yes. I mean, you know, I, I agree that people kind of like to hear echo chambers. 
um, you know, the same. Yeah. yeah. How do you feel about the backlash over changes made in The Killing Joke? Well, I think that people aren't thinking that through completely. The Killing Joke is a very abbreviated story. It's a very short story, really. And to make a full-length movie out of it, there were two options, basically. Either dilute the story um, and fill it, fill it with a lot of filling and padding, or add something onto it. Mm-hmm. And I'm really glad that they did not choose to dilute it. They did not choose to pad it out, which is what a lot of producers would have done. They kept the killing joke pretty much line for line true to the comic book. But they added a prequel to it, a sort of pre-story that feeds into it. Um, I thought it was a really smart thing to do, and it was the right thing to do. And I, I think a lot of people who are criticizing it aren't necessarily thinking that through clearly as to what the alternative would have been. Um, and the alternative would have been, I think, pretty bad. Well, I mean, do you think so that... I think what they did... Uh, do, you, do you think that the changes that they made um, kind of diminished uh, Barbara's strength at all? Yeah, I know some some of, of female, some of, some of my female Twitter followers have been uh, voicing that there are some female... Um, anxiety about Barbara's um, being weakened or being... But the point is, the point of the prequel wasn't to weaken Barbara. The point of the prequel was to give Batman... um, Because it's a Batman-Joker story. It's not a Barbara story. Right. And the point was to give Batman motivation to go after Joker. And the point was for Joker to challenge uh, Gordon, uh, Commissioner Gordon, and try and break him by destroying his daughter. So it's, Barbara is being used as a tool by Joker. And she becomes the catalyst for Batman to go after Joker. But the point wasn't to diminish Barbara. But it's not a story about Barbara. Does that make sense? It does. She's a vehicle. Barbara's a vehicle in this story for the other characters. And um, and then at the end, she becomes Oracle. So she does find enormous strength at the end. Right. Um, I, th- I think the criticism comes from, you know, these are these are things that happened in the graphic novel. You know, I mean, he Joker still uses Barbara in the same way. Um, you know, she still becomes Oracle. Like, so you do have that recovery... Uh, you know, there, just the, the kind of sexual relationship between her and Batman and, and kind of her um, making choices based on pursuing Batman, um, that is, that is the, the kind of criticism of, you know, that she becomes not someone who is Batgirl because she wants to, you know, do something noble or, you know, whatever. It becomes more of a... Of a trying to get with Batman situation. I think that's very ennobling about her. I think people are, are, are reading too much into it. I think that the, the weakness in, in that story isn't in Barbara. And I think people are perceiving her as weak. I think the weakness is in Bruce Wayne and Batman. Mm-hmm. I, cer- I certainly know that that's how he views it. Um, he knows He's wounded. He knows he's incapable of the kind of intimacy that Barbara wants. But he knows he wants it, and he needs it. But he knows he's incapable of it. And in a moment of weakness, he goes there. Um, Because he's a man. (laughs) Um, I don't see it as... A lot of the audience has interpreted it as as a weakness in Barbara. That she looks like a a sort of a pining teenager. Or rather... It's not. She's she's deeply in love. She's being human. She's she her emotional response I think is the appropriate one. Batman's is the one who's screwed up. He's the dark, broody, incapable of human contact character. And he knows that about himself. Um, and he's trying to warn her to stay away from him, basically. And she's in love. Hmm. I don't 
see that as a, a lot of the audience see that as a weakness in her, and I don't see it that way. Great, great. Can we round things up there? Sure. Sure, sorry, but I know you lined up, but that, that's great. Thank you so much, Erin. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.